In this video, we're checking out LKC Variator. It's a new free script from LKC and it's fantastic. So here's the website, LKC Variator free. There's a little uh, trailer sort of video there, uh, the link to the repo and also some tutorials that uh, Nicola has created. This is a tool that you can use to create random variations to your project by manipulating items, pitch, uh, rate, the length, the fades, time stretching, changing the files entirely. It's really cool and it's so easy to use. The creator, Nicola, has put in a lot of really great ideas into the script and uh, I know you're gonna love it. Uh, if you work in sound design, if you work in game audio, uh, but this can also be used in music applications. So let's check it out. All right, so I've got a project here and I've got some uh, samples kind of laid out, kind of synced within one spot. And it sounds like this. Kind of just chose these samples at random. There's sort of some tonal things. There's some low elements. There's some buzzy sort of things. There's something that comes up before the rest of the, the transient information there just to get a variety of sounds and, and sort of like an interesting kind of sci-fi uh, impact sound, energy bolt or something like that. So I'm gonna bring up LKC Variator. We're gonna bring up the GUI. And so we get this window. This script manipulates your items through volume, pan, pitch, tape stretch, rate, position, content, length, fades, fade shape, and file all these different variations. There are other scripts that can kind of do that, but this puts it all in one really nice interface. And I really like that. Also has the ability to randomize the sliders for each of these. So we just hit the randomize button here and it just makes a random seed of settings for these. The further they are from zero, the more extreme the changes will be. Uh, so for example, the volume, I think will go up to minus 18. Uh, it doesn't boost by any large amounts just for safety, you know. For things like position, um, it will it will change based on um, your time selection. So if I have time selection like this, I have some items selected, the position will shift these um, up to the time selection boundaries. But if I have a region, it will go within the region boundaries. This will apply to selected items and within regions. So you can actually have a bunch of regions and create multiple variations really quickly. There's a reset button that brings everything back down to normal. There's a decontaminate button that resets the items, its pitch, its pan, its volume, things like that. And then there's the actual mutate button, which does our variation. So let's select some items here. I'm gonna turn off file for now because I don't want that to happen, but we can hit mutate. And so now let's hear this variation. And if we don't like that, undo, run it again. That's kind of a cool one. You can get some really weird, wild variations. Just keep the ones that you like. Um, I, I like that it, it randomizes all these things and you end up with results that you probably wouldn't achieve making these changes manually. So I'm going to go back to the beginning. Again, it sounds like this. And I'm going to duplicate this region three times. Let's try to make sure that this stays on the screen for you guys. I have a bad habit of moving windows off the screen and then not recording them. Do an item selection only like this. And then they're going to, let's, uh, let's reset this. Let's just adjust position and mutate. And so they'll shift a bunch of times, but they're not never going to leave the region boundaries. And each item itself has a random uh, position applied to it. So it's not one random seed that applies to all items. It's random per item. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so what do we have now? So let's say we want to keep that, but we want to change the rate and let's apply time stretching to this. Setting the, t the tape slash stretch mode, 
Uh, that's the um, preserve pitch in items when you're changing the play rate. Uh, so putting this at 50 is going to give you a 50-50 chance per item, whether it's going to change. If you have this at zero, it's going to set it to off. If you set it to 100, it's going to be on. So let's just give it a random chance per item. So I'm gonna mutate. And that time I've only changed the, um, the rate and whether it's pitch shifted. So it gets pretty weird. You can save your settings here. So if you just hit random a few times or if you have some specific settings that you really like, so maybe volume like this, pitch like this, or a pan like that, so pitch shifting. If you like these settings, you can just hit save. We'll get a pop-up. Formula is now saved in slot three and okay. And we can load these different formulas in there. It can be really cool to just randomly change items. This will use just random items from the same folder that the current items are in. And if there's any kind of lag that you see here, it's not because of the script. It's because I'm taking these files off my other computer, which you can see behind me uh, over the network. So my main sample library is on that computer on an external Mac only drive. I'm recording on my PC right now. And this project is running off of that computer. So any lag you see is not from the script, but from that. Control A to select all the items. Mutate has to rebuild peaks because I've changed 15 items here. Just take a second. In each of the folders that those samples were in, it's picked another random sample. And so some of these will work, some of these won't, um, but I've gotten some really interesting results from this. Uh, so we'll just undo that. I don't think that one is better than what we had. So I'll just run that again. We'll see what happens. So I've reset it. I've loaded up another preset um, uh, formula that I saved earlier, and it's going to randomize pan, pitch, tape, stretch, rate, position, and the file. Let's see what happens. Lots of weird sounds, but uh, yeah, I think you get the idea. It's a really cool way to add some variations to things, whether subtly or extreme, things that you wouldn't achieve doing it manually because you wouldn't think to do those things. So I'm just gonna quickly show you the vertical layout. So after you change a layout or these other options here, hit exit and then run that script again. And now it looks like this and you can dock this to the left side of your monitor like this and do something like that. And then all those controls are there. Let's move on to uh, another demo project. So this is a music project. It's just a bunch of one-shot samples in here, kind of random sort of percussion sounds. Here's what it sounds like. And let's just run mutate on this with these settings and see what happens. So it's changed a few things. It's, it's definitely repositioned some items. Um, yeah, let's see how this sounds. I love that little hit at the end. It doesn't make any sense, but but yeah, this is this completely mangles things at times in in kind of a cool way. In the options, I have snap mutations to grid enabled, and that means that it's going to follow your grid uh, snap settings. So if you've got your project set to quarter notes, when you adjust the position of something, it's going to snap them to quarter notes grid. Uh, in that case, it just removed some of those. Uh, we'll just undo that. Um, but if you had this on 30 second notes and mutate, then its position can be on any of those 30, 30 second note grid lines. 
It also means that even if nothing is selected and you have this on like eighth note, if you mutate, that will remove anything that's not on those grid lines. So it's just something to be aware of. I think that works fairly intuitively, but you might see that as a bug as well. So if grid lines are turned off and you mutate, nothing happens. It can change this to half notes, no changes. But with position, we can add some variation to this. And again, the smaller the number or the closer to zero this is, the less variation there is. At 100, it can move anywhere, left or right, up to my time selection range or the region that the items are within. All right, so let's add some variation in here. Let's do it just with the file changes. Let's randomize these conga hits. It's kind of interesting. You can do all of the items at once. So the rhythm stays the same, but all of the sounds are randomized. And I think that's kind of a cool thing that you wouldn't easily be able to do manually. Uh, I can't think of how I would do that without you know, having to put a lot of intentional thought into things. So let's randomize and also shift the content, see what happens there. Kind of cool. Let's just randomize these completely and hit mutate. And so we've got fade shapes changing, we've got volume changing, and the files changing. Now let's move on to the Chernobyl uh, effect, which randomizes all the parameters and uh, does a random seed per item. So it's completely madness. Let's see what, what this looks like. Okay, try again. This setting also splits the items. So if we go up to options menu and show overlapping media in lanes, you can see that some of these items are overlapping a lot. There's a lot of very small changes happening here. And also in here, there's the option of um, randomizing the file. So let's enable that, hit apply. And uh, I'm gonna undo to reset those items and run that. And so that's gone a lot more extreme. I had a really great conversation with Nicola last week. I suggested a ton of things. I really love it as it is. In fact, I think there, he's putting in too much stuff for a free version. A pro version is coming and he's going to be working on it slowly. Uh, it's not his main priority, but I think if you work in game audio like he does, uh, or sound design, or if you have an interest in, in kind of random chance variations to your projects, this is a really awesome script. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon. And visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.